everybody. Good afternoon. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You. It is hot, um, but I must say, here in Pennsylvania, but I must say the humidity isn't quite as bad as it was the last few days. Um, the boys have been working on our deck, putting the back deck on. Oh my word. It was 100 degrees yesterday with a big percent of humidity. But the humidity's dropped again today and it's nice and almost cool here. Um, it's quite lovely. So um, and Maxwell and I went out earlier this morning to do some chores. Um, we had to run to the post office and I, I, um, I know you haven't seen him for a, a few weeks so I thought I'd video just a, just a few seconds of videoing. A bit, a bit silly, um, silly of us, uh, our dear Maxwell. Um, he's, such a, he's such a good boy, such a hard worker. Um, he was a little bit hyper today actually and I said what in the world's the matter with you? Um, he was all excited but here he's going to be going to the movies um, with his brother tonight um, for the first time in forever to see a Fast and a Furious video or something a movie like that um, and his nephew so um, his nephew's who's who's six months younger than him. <laughs> it's funny that. Um, so he's all excited he was all hyper so you must excuse him if he's all over the place. But hey everybody, good morning, it's Jean here. <laughs> Jean True Love from Trilla Quotes for You. I'm in my car, we're gonna be doing some chores. I'm just waiting for Maxwell. He just had to go back into the house and put a package in that came out. I, um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't have anything a tutorial or anything today. We're just out for a ride, but you haven't seen Maxwell for a while and I thought if he wants to be filmed, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him because sometimes, sometimes he doesn't want to be, but um, I'll, I'll ask him if he wants to be filmed. So here goes, here goes, let's just see. Hey my man. Hello. I have a camera, do you mind? Uh, nah, I'm good. <laughs> that shirt. <laughs> do you mind? People haven't seen you for a while. They were, they were they're like wanting to say hello to Maxwell. I get all the, oh Maxwell, Maxwell's so cute, we love Maxwell. Here you go, you can hold that for mommy. Oh, you've got your, oh, you've got your. Priorities. What is that? What is that stuff? What is it? Coffee alternative. Go slowly, go slowly. Uh, A coffee alternative? Oh, it's hot. Oh, man. Why didn't you start this car? Sorry, 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 sorry. It's hotter in here than out there. I don't think so. It looks nice. Yeah. Can we can we put an exhaust on your Cadillac? Oh, shut up! <laughs> to make it louder. <laughs> Come up. on! Shut up oh, it. of one day that will be my car, that and I'm and I'm gonna put a loud exhaust. And next time you start it, you're gonna <laughs> run. It's like oh, nice and quiet, and it, and it starts and it's just all loud. I know. Look at that. Anyway, put attention to us. People want to see your handsome face. So you went to hair cuttery. And you got you didn't get your guy that you usually get. That's a shame. Uh, I don't know where he he is. I'm not sure if he moved to still has a job at hair cuttery, just at a different hair cuttery, so. Ah. Well your hair looks nice. I like it. And and dad's dad's look nice too. Um yes, and I I paid the same price for her as for him. I paid oh. the same exact price. Oh, okay. So what is convenient? It's well, not wait a minute, don't they have a don't they have a set price for hair cuts? Oh, I don't know, I've never been there. Like they, if if you just walk in, yeah. they ha it's a, it's a lower price than if you. I, I've specifically requested Amber. It they have just a higher price, just ah. just a few more dollars extra because you're you want specifically that person. That person you're making an appointment now. Uh, yes, they, they they have guys there, but it was only two, two girls working there right now. Oh, okay. So here we are at the. Post office. We have some things to do. Uh, post office. Uh, I don't really want to go on now. I'm good. I don't want to go <laughs> nah, outside. Nice. We're good. It's too hot outside. <laughs> Why do we always film when it's so hot outside and we're sitting in the car? Neither one of us and neither one of us like like the heat. So we're sitting in the air conditioning. <clears throat> but you're gonna use your use not your debit. You're not gonna use your debit card. You're going to use my debit card. Uh, yes. Because what? Oh, you! Oh, thank no, you. No, 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 don't no, no, show no. That. no, no. It, anyway, Maxwell got a new debit card. Uh, uh, you can, um, you know, you can 
people blur the. I'm the sure. No one saw that. Uh, no, I saw. Uh, I know, but um, <laughs> if they did see you, you, you could blur the, the n numbers on your editing software. I can do that. So. No one saw that. I, I just flashed it. So da Maxwell got a new debit card because why? Why did you need another, another pretty brand new shot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, I don't know card. why I'm laughing. But you're not laughing. But you, sh you, but you are laughing. What happened to your, uh, your what your fourth debit card? Fifth. Your fifth debit card. What happened, Maxwell? Uh, there was the, this distillery where I was going for a rum tasting. It's it is called the Twelve Mile Rum. Rum. It's like in the, Florida. The, Yes, in Florida, the, this rum is not even out yet. Okay, it's not, not even out, but the their vodka is okay out. Okay, can I just quickly explain that in Florida when we went to our vacation a few uh, weeks ago, Max and, and Daddy went, went to, to the a shady distillery. Shady distillery because they enjoy a little dram of whiskey and rum, um, and I'm, you went I'm, for a I'm, tasting. I'm not a w whiskey fan; I'm more of a rum. A rum fan. So he. He got some, um, he got, they had a lovely evening, really nice, but somewhere along the way, you lost your debit card. Yes. So it was, you didn't have it for a little while. And then what happened was, um, I said, well, you'd call the bank, Maxwell. I'm not doing this. You call the bank. You lost your card. Um, so Maxwell did what? I love responsibilities. <laughs> he lost responsibility. Well, or being unresponsible, uh, oh, 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 disresponsible, uh, no. unresponsible, uh, <laughs> not responsible. Uh, um, hey, I, wa I was responsible, now I'm unresponsible, but I should be re more responsible A little now. bit more, yeah, because you lost that card for the fifth time, fourth or fifth time. You fifth, called the fifth, bank. Fifth time, so this is my sixth card. So when you called the bank, who did you call? Local uh, bank. You called the local bank and, and said what to them? Because you had um, what? You had ordered... Uh, I I ordered a card online. Yeah. It didn't. It said it was going to be a week, but they said that if it doesn't come within the week, you call the bank. So he called so, the local bank. So I called I called the local bank. I explained the situation, and then they say like, sure, come the ne next day. Walk in the bank the next day. Give them the my ID, and I got my debit card just like that. Oh, that was amazing. You know how banking takes forever, especially nowadays, you know, with social distancing and everything. I was waiting in the car because I said, this is your thing. You go, you go in the bank. I don't know. I don't fancy going to the bank. If you need me, <clears> I, I have my phone on. Um, but I sat there and I got my phone out ready, waiting in the car, ready to be um, <clears> waiting a while. Maxwell was out like in a heartbeat. And you didn't have to give your account number. No. Nothing. They, they sort of knew him. Uh, why do they know you at uh, that they bank? They probably knew me from the last bank. <laughs> because, <laughs> because because I have a reputation <laughs> for losing your debit card. Oh uh, yeah. That's so that's so not responsible, <laughs> Maxwell. And but, then and then <clears throat> when you got your debit card, I made some responsible <laughs> decisions. <laughs> totally responsible. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway, thirty-five dollars here. Thirty-five dollars here. Dollars there. Fifteen dollars here. Yeah, uh, here. here we have to discuss that. Anyway, okay, you got to go to the post office. I'm giving you my debit card. You have it. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, um, I'm good. No. Okay. <laughs> go and put that on. And um, uh, insure <clears throat> for um, two hundred. Good boy. <laughs> he knew that. All right. Thanks, folks. <laughs> But I do have a small tutorial for you today. Um, again, quite a few of you have been experiencing what I was experiencing in, in, in our sewing room and our creative juices not flowing as well. Maybe just making smaller, simpler projects. I've gotten a lot of, um, a lot of comments about that. Oh, a lovely breeze. Oh, it's a lovely breeze. Um, I guess about, maybe about two and a half, three years ago, I had made a cathedral windows quilt. Now, if you look up a traditional cathedral, oops, cathedral windows, <laughs> oh, <laughs> cathedral windows um, quilt pattern, it takes a lot of fabric and, oh, excuse me, and um, um, 
it, it's a matter of like taking a piece of fabric and folding it and it I think my quilt not made in the traditional manner my quilt um, it ended up with about making about oh about 40 about 40 yards of fabric maybe even more um, and I had the privilege of seeing it in a quilt show hanging up. It was really sweet. It was really nice. And then I did a tutorial, actually, and I'll put the link below. I did a tutorial on, on a small pillow cushion that I had made using this Cathedral Windows method. The quilt that I had made, following the way I had made my cathedral windows pillow, was made exactly the same way. I just kept adding to my quilt. Unbelievable. And I thought some, uh, the boys had said to me, Mom, why don't you do some videos going back, since you're not as creative now, going back and uh, revisiting some of the, your older videos that you've done, older projects. So I thought that's a good idea, but I certainly was not about to make a cathedral windows pillow or another cathedral windows quilt. Been there, done that. But I did decide to make <laughs> A cathedral windows pincushion. Super, super easy. Really a sweet way to use up some scraps, small scraps of fabric, make these lovely little pin cushions. I love them. I've done a tutorial. The next, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes, but my tutorial is on these. I have made two of these, sort of as my prototype and learning. I had, um, made pin cushions, silly little practical pin cushions filled with the crushed walnut shells. I had done a tutorial oh, about a year ago um, with, the, with the, the walnut shells, which are really good for the pins. To keep I don't know what it's short. for. Um, you can get it at pet supply places. I filled my other pin cushion with that. I did not do that with these. I have used batting and fiber fill, just like the puffy fiber fill. Um, but I had gotten a really pretty beautiful fiber fill pin cushion from a shop, I don't know, a couple years ago. And it was, it was lovely, really pretty, just stuffed with fiber fill. And at one point I went to pick it up and I thought, oh, what in the world was that? Here, the um, pins and the needles sort of had maybe, a needle had sort of worked through and went through, right through dead to the bottom of the, pot, the, um, the uh, pin cushion. And I thought, oh, that wasn't good. It was just filled with fiber fill. Well, these are filled with fiber fill, but what I've done is I've put cardboard inside and I've lined the pin cushion bottom with a piece of cardboard so that if your needles or your pins do happen to needles do happen to go through, it's not going to hurt. It's going to stop at the cardboard. So I figured out, I didn't know how to do that. I just figured out how to shove a piece of cardboard in there before I stuff it. I used a tremendous amount. It's funny that I used a tremendous amount of stuffing. You wouldn't think so. These little pin cushions, right? Really a lot of stuffing. So it's really nice and firm. They work really beautifully. Now these little pin cushions, you could have put, I could have put a button in the middle, um, maybe hot glued a button. Uh, I didn't because I thought, well, if, I'm, if I use a pin cushion, maybe I'd hit the button. But by all means, I think it would finish it off to put a real pretty decorative button on the, on my pin cushions. Um, so that's what my tutorial is. But I just wanted to say I've made a couple of these. And as you know, if you've been following, I at the end of my um, videos, I always say become a patron. I have a Patreon page, which means that people um, pay extra, pay little, leave me a tip in my tip jar in my sewing room on my Patreon page and they sort of um, are helping me along so I can make vid my videos over here on YouTube which is obviously completely free. Um, it's just so nice that, that these a handful of people have chosen to pay to, to give me a few dollars a month. Really, really, really nice and very handy. So what I usually do is I will do an exclusive Patreon video tutorial for my patrons only. Um, and in order to watch those tutorials, you have to become a patron. Uh, you can unlock the, the videos uh, on my Patreon page. Well, at the end of the uh, project, I will give away my project of the month or the, my tutorial to some patrons, maybe one or two patrons who win my project. I was debating when I was making these little things, I was debating, should I do just a Patreon exclusive video and do my tutorial where I think about the average is about 50 to 80 people watch my Patreon videos as opposed to 
a thousand or so or however many views I get for my YouTube channel I thought no I'm gonna make these for my YouTube family here this tutorial but how however I am going to be selecting from my patrons list two winners I'm going to be sending two of my each one of my pin cushions to two patrons from this tutorial that I've done so become a patron you could win a pin cushion <laughs> or whatever my project of the month is but this month it's my little pin cushion I think it's so very sweet you do have to um, at the very end you do have to do a bit of hand sewing and as you know I hate to hand sew but I did it because I was saying in my video I don't think there's really any any way that you could actually machine stitch this you, you really do have to hand stitch it with tiny stitches because I have really stuffed these little pin cushions I have really stuffed them they are nice and practical just so lovely and very simple to make maybe not a very 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 beginner sewer seamstress but an advanced beginner, there's no curved piecing. It looks like it, doesn't it? I mean, it looks in depth. It looks like, you know, complicated. It's not. You just have to be careful when you're turning the frame and top stitching it. I explain it step by step. Of course I do. Um, so two people, that my tutorials on this one, they measure, this one's slightly smaller. I don't know why. This is the tutorial, um, three inch squares. That's all. You need a bunch of three inch squares of scraps because, and each, each three inch square will show. So you, you don't, it doesn't matter which um, sort of configuration you put it in. Again, I explain that because they all will show your three inch square scraps. Everyone will show with this and then a little bit of fabric for your frame whichever color and a hunk of cardboard to make it nice and practical really really nice sturdy really nice oh, presents yes. so right. again i come to you through my woods <laughs> and uh, as always love from the true loves all right folks bye so this is what we need to make my lovely little pin cushion here okay it has the cardboard so your pins don't go through it or your needles don't go through it it's protected and this measures about uh, almost five inches square almost five inches square not quite so I've used the same uh, fabric that I'm going to be showing you that I made this little pin cushion here so what we're going to be needing first of all is out of our fabrics here that we we see my red and my black fabrics you're going to be cutting eight you're going to be cutting eight different patterns great way to use up scraps here it could just be scrappy this was a fabric line that I just cut eight three inch squares for my what I'm calling my frame my turned over little frame here which is white for me <laughs> I have cut so again I have cut eight three inch squares from my f uh, from uh, oh frame a frame fabric that's what I'm calling my frame fabric my white okay for my backing I've used a black and white dot I've just I've just sliced it off um, for the backing and the the backing and the batting you're going to be needing a piece about seven inches square we're going to be cutting that down but again just a scrap uh, bigger than six inches or so we're, um, we're going to be cutting this down obviously but I just grabbed a bit so I've just said seven inches square okay you're going to obviously be needing your fiber fill okay I'm using a poly fill um, this is a um, polyester fiber fill here what I'm using if it's called Fairfield in this country let's see yeah so this is what I'm using this fiber fill here for dolls, stuff, toys, and crafts. All right, so you're gonna be needing, obviously not that much. They do come in small packages, <laughs> smaller packages. And then um, again, I have cut out here. This is again, um, cutting it a little bit bigger because I'm not quite sure how big it is, but I've cut one piece of cardboard approximately four and a half inches square. That's this cardboard. I had gotten, I had gotten a, any cardboard will do. This was from my, um, my comic book boards that I wrap my fabric with. I just cut a piece off and I think that's real important to have that card on the bottom of your little pin cushion. So, yeah. so I'm at my ironing little station here. Now this is tone on tone fabric. I want to make sure that I have the, the uh, wrong sides together. I'm just going to 
iron these squares if we've cut them nice and square they will uh, they will go on the half diagonal beautifully you're going to iron these really well in half on the diagonal the wrong sides together so that we get a nice sharp crease <laughs> folded triangles and I'm just going to put them over here and then I have my eight three inch squares. I'm going to be taking four of my squares here. Okay, I'm going to be taking four of them. Now this is sort of a, um, a wildlife um, themed fabric. doesn't really matter because as you saw in the beginning all of the fabrics are going to show to some extent. So I just like these. So I'm going to be taking, I'll put four of them aside and I'm just going to be taking my four here. What I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to take one three inch square and I'm going to take one of my folded fabrics and as you can see there's a raw edge here and there's a raw edge there with the folded edge here. I'm going to place that folded edge right on the diagonal of my other three inch square. Okay? With the raw edge and the raw edge. Then I'm going to take another one and I'm going to do the ex exact opposite. I'm going to put the folded edge and I'm going to butt that right up to that folded edge there. And we've covered our entire three inch square. By all means, if you'd want to pin this or clip it, you can. But I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to stitch it a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to secure these two folded pieces onto my fabric here. I keep my needle down and I turn. Now there is a way you could probably do this by chain piecing these four units, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do one at a time. So this is what we end up with, okay? This is what we end up with. I'm just going to continue working on my next three. Again, my folded piece goes in diagonal to diagonal, and I'll just lay that right next to it. And since we've cut it very well, and since we've folded it really well and ironed it, you know that it's going to work out really beautifully. Just going to push them together. Take your time doing this because this is um, this is what makes your beautiful, lovely rolled and stitched down frames so nice. So you can see it doesn't take long. As I said, by all means, you could have glued it. Uh, well, not glued it. You could have um, clipped it if you wanted to. I'll just finish up these last two. So now I have my four little packages here, okay? What we want to do is you want to be very careful. We're going to configure, doesn't matter really uh, the color scheme because you're all you're going to see all of the colors anyway. What we're going to do though, we're going to configure the diagonals. We're going to make a sets of two, one, two, and at this point, we're going to be wanting these diagonals to come to the center point. You got that? You want to be center. You want these diagonals to come to the point on this top row. We're making a bit of a little four patch, okay? And then you want the diagonals to go up to the center on this bottom row. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, I'm going to put the pretty side to the pretty side, okay? I'm going to put it, the, the, the uh, fabrics together like that. And now I'm going to stitch, because we didn't stitch quite quarter of an inch, I'm going to stitch about a quarter of an inch. It's a bit thick, but that's okay. And I'm going to back stitch only because there's quite a bit of fabric in there. Now, at, at this point, you have this, this here with this seam, and I will say, just press that open, just finger press that open. 
it's not on the bias you can do it be you can be nice and strong pressing that open like that we are going to go over and iron this really nice and flat okay but it will press open for you now we're going to do this the uh, next set and again we're just going to flip that over to there i'm making sure that my diagonals are going to the bottom point and because we've cut it and sewn it can stitch that at a nice quarter oops <laughs> it came out from under my presser foot nice quarter of an inch and back stitch and we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to open up that seam right there it's where the frame fabric is and really give that a nice a nice sturdy finger press okay like that and and that one is there okay now again I'm going to iron this in a minute but again I know that they're nice and opened up that seam there and again we're going to be putting this side over to there my dot my points are all going to the center and as you can see it's the exact size that we want and we have these little triangles here you want to match that seam up right there and both seams are going to be opened up both seams are going to be opened up you're going to start up up here at the top and as you see it how important it is to to really cut these at three inches and again i'm doing it a quarter of an inch my bottom seam is open now i am going to just back stitch on that thick seam there the center seam because it's rather thick it has quite a few layers and I'm going to back stitch at the end there okay so now we have this little origami type of thing here okay and we're going to do the exact same thing now I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm going to press that seam hopefully you can see I have ironed that within an inch of its life and actually that is laying really nice and flat really super flat there's not really a lump there it is just laying really nice and flat okay so now we have this little origami thing i'm going to reach over and i'm going to take my next four three inch squares here okay now what you're wanting to do is if you want to pin this or if you want to put some dots of glue you by all means you can i don't do that because i find that i have more control if i just do it this way what we're going to do is in this area right here okay in this area right here if you remember my my uh pillow my um pin cushion we've rolled that over this little frame this fold here is on the bias okay so what we do is with our three inch square we're going to put our three inch square a little bit less than a quarter of an inch a little bit less than a quarter of an inch here this is a raw edge we've just cut this don't worry about this bit hanging off do not worry about that bit hanging off right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start at the very corner this is about 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 an eighth of an inch away i'm going to with the my red here just tucked under this fold it's a raw edge but it's going to be covered up i'm just going to roll it i'm not pulling it i'm not pulling it i don't want this to be pulled this is all secured down here right we've stitched this down but i'm just going to gently gently roll from that point from that corner point here i'm going to tuck that little that raw edge of my red under this frame and i'm just going to hold it i find it easier to hold if by all means you want to use pins you can now I put my I put my needle right down on that point at the very corner, okay? And as you see, I'm going to tuck that raw edge. As you see, my white frame because it's on the bias, it just has rolled over beautifully to make this little oval. Okay? I just start and what I'm going to be doing is I'm just holding it here. Again, by all means if you'd want to pin it, don't be pulling it. You can see if it puckers up in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch. I'm going to top stitch on the outside. This is the inside. I'm going to be top stitching this frame right down. Very careful. I'm going to go very slowly. 
all the while holding my lovely little oval here <laughs> and tucking my raw edge but I'm not pulling anything and I'm just top stitching very slowly along that edge right there okay and I'm aiming towards this center point okay there's a point right there where all the intersections came together right and that little piece of fabric has rolled my frame has rolled right over because it's on the bias okay I'm tucking that little you might want to use a little seam ripper a little stiletto to tuck your little raw edge in and I'm aiming my threat my my uh, needle right so it ends right in the it right it's smack dab in the center okay right there my needle is right in the center I'm going to pick up my presser foot and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around okay trim off this seam trim off that okay and again you can see that this piece of fabric here I can roll that I can roll that starting at the center point right there I can roll that right over tucking that raw edge putting my putting my presser foot down and you can feel it make that lovely little point I'm not pulling anything and I'm stitching again on the on the outside just holding it I don't need to I think pins would get in my way my fingers can do the job just as good and I'm just going to end right at the corner there okay press the foot up I'm just going to leave that like that as it is now I'm going to take my next piece and on the diagonal so again this one I'm going to start again right in the corner right in the corner and I'm going to roll that over I don't want to pull it too much I don't want to pull it like that you can just feel it it's secured in the corner you just want to see that sort of ovally point and you're going to start right in the corner and we're aiming we're tucking that raw edge and we're aiming for the outside right here we're just going to top stitch take it steady even if you're a beginner seamstress you can you can sew this well and again, where are we aiming for? We're aiming for this center point here with that point rolled right over. And it's enclosing that raw edge. You see how this is make how it's being constructed now. And I'm going to go right into that point. I'm going to leave my needle down. I'm going to bring my presser foot up. And I'm going to again, even if this shifts, you just like that it's sort of shifted a bit. That's okay. You can see it all being enclosed. You sort of roll this because you have enough fabric here. You just sort of roll that edge, that raw edge there. You put your needle down, you press your foot down, and then you just aim for the inside curve here. So now what we have is we have this. What I do is I just turn it over. I turn it over right this. And I can see that I'm just going to trim off half that little triangle of what's left of my three inch square. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that beautiful? Super. I have made, as you saw in the beginning, I've made a whole quilt like this. <laughs> I just kept going and going and going and going and going. It's like five, 50 yards of fabric. It takes a lot of fabric. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over and do our next step. Again, I've gone over and I've ironed that really, really well. It's beautiful and crisp and lovely. Super. Just put that to the side. And I've grabbed my piece. I, it was just a scrap of my backing and my, and my, um, uh, my batting here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my backing piece onto my batting okay and again I've I've done this larger but you could have done it perfectly what is this uh six inch square say I did a seven inch or so I am going to be cutting this down so now what I have I have my backing with the right side up onto my backing onto my batting okay now what I'm going to be doing is let me trim that up there I'm going to take my little top piece and I'm just going to center that here onto my backing and I'm going to be putting the pretty side to the pretty to the pretty side okay now 
I have found when I made my other one, you really do need a big, a fairly decent opening to get this backing and the batting through it. So what I've done is I've gone down to about an inch, maybe a maybe little bit less than an inch. Yeah, about an inch. I can see the stitching where I've stitched and I want to stitch so we don't see that on the other side, okay? So I'm going down about an inch, okay? And I'm going right down into the corner and then I'm turning over. down about an inch okay so I, I do have two corners now I leave my needle down and again if you've seen me if you do this a million times this opening I didn't do it here I, I will reinforce that this opening here is going to have a lot of stress on it it as in any opening when you're turning something inside out I leave my needle down so this is my opening here right this is my opening but instead of the stress being on just that seam what I do is I come back and I, I sew off and I make like a stop like that okay I didn't do it over here so I find that where my opening is and I'll come on I'll come on this side right up to that stitching that quarter of an inch and I make the stop now because this is a lot of fabric there's a lot of fabric I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna find my I'm going to reinforce my stitching We have the backing and the backing batting on one side. What we're going to do is I'm not going to trim. I'm not usually you take off the, the lump here at the end of the when you turn something, you take the corners off to eliminate the bulk. I want the bulk there. I want the bulk there. I want the I want the um, pins to have as much fabric and not trimmed away. And as you can see, we needed that large opening because it's a little bit of a it's a little bit um, of a lump here. opening here it's nice so when we go to stitch that closed it'll be fairly easy when we stuff it with our stuffing now what I am what I am doing is I'm separating the backing from the batting here okay and it's a little bit fiddly and you might have to trim this down probably you have to trim it down because it's ungainly it's sort of it's sort of a weird thing I, I don't know quite what I'm doing I sort of folded my piece of card like that in thirds and then I'm going to insert it between just the fabric the backing and the batting okay and then I'm just going to open it up just going to open it up and try to push it as best I can it may be a bit small you might make it one a bit larger you might want to experiment with this or actually actually maybe what I'm going to do hold on I'm going to I'm going to take it out and instead of doing it up I'll go down and then sort of open it up on itself. That's a bit easier. And I'm just going to put the corners of my cardboard as best I can into the corners of my backing. Yeah, that worked out better. So I'm just gonna fiddle it around and you can feel. Now my cardboard is in right there. It's the first line of defense, okay? It's my backing and then my cardboard and then my batting, okay? So now I want to put my, I want to put my um, fiber fill next. I want to put my fiber fill between the cardboard and the back and the backing, the batting, okay? So with, I don't know if you, if you know, when you're working with fiber fill, your tendency is maybe to take this huge, great big lump. Oh, I can just shove that in. Don't do that. You want to take little tiny pieces, okay? And then you want to take your, you want to take a pair of scissors, dull, dull scissors, and really work little tiny pieces, just small pieces, into the corners. It's very, very, very important to take your fiber fill right into the corners here. And you'll be surprised at how much fiber fill will go into a little tiny pin cushion. So. 
So, as you notice, there is a tremendous amount of stuffing in my little pin cushion here. Tremendous amount for that little pin cushion. And it's really nice and solid. The, neat, the pins are going to go right in there. Now, what you want it to do is you're really wanting to push that down. You want almost a bit too much and push it down because then what we're going to do is you're going to do it and I'm going to do it off camera. I won't bore you is I'm going to take my backing here and I'm going to fold it over and this is where you want to use your pins or your heavy duty clips. You want to tuck this all in nice and straight, pull it right out lovely and straight and then I'm going to with tiny, tiny little stitches. And then you rearrange, as you would in any pillow or opening, you arrange the fiber fill into the corners like that. Oh, it's lovely and solid. Wish you could feel that with a nice bottom edge like that. This one's turned out slightly, no, this is almost the same size, yeah. I'm going to make a sweet little quilt. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so again, I'm going to be giving these two little pin cushions away. I'll be making some more. But um, yeah, I do hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, folks, um, and make some of these. These are sweet way to use up little scraps. I just love them. Really, really sweet. I do recommend you use the cardboard um, to make them more practical. All right. Thanks again, folks. And um, yeah, love from the true loves. Bye.